I'm just going to take a couple minutes here and explain what IQ is and what it means and why it's useful. So in IQ stands for Intelligence Quotient. Intelligence Quotient. Quotient, I think is how you spell that. And so this tells us that it has something to do with intelligence, which is uh, generally how smart you are or your problem-solving ability. And the quotient, I'll show you in a second, just comes from the fact that it's divided. Um, so intelligence is kind of um, a weird term in psychology. It's, it's how do we define what intelligence is, and I don't think we've ever gotten a satisfactory answer to that. Um, the only answer that we've really gotten is this IQ test, so it's sort of a circular logic thing. It doesn't really uh, give a good description of it, but what it is is you go in and you're asked a bunch of questions, um, and maybe it's on uh, pencil and paper, maybe it's um, playing with little blocks and trying to put them in order, and it gives you little patterns of like in the first block, this one is colored in, and then in the second one, this one is colored in, and in the third one, this one's colored in. So your question is, what happens in the fourth one according to this pattern, or something like that? Or, or it might be, um, if all zips are zoodles, and this is sort of a logic question, and all zoodles are zoinks, zoinks, that's an eight, uh, then are all zips zoinks, and then you'll have to say yes or no. And so, you know, you have to say if all of these are those and all of those, and, and it's just sort of weirdly worded logic questions that sort of boil down to common sense, but maybe they're a little bit hard to phrase. And so that's one of the major uh, barriers of IQ tests, is, is that um, they sort of rely on people knowing English, or, or you know, you have to translate it, and then it requires, it depends on how good the translation is, of whether they understand it, and if uh, they have trouble seeing the paper, they might not be able to see which box is colored in, they might not be able to read the words, so on. And so, it, you know, it's it's um, hard to get a standard measurement on. And, and one way that we found to standardize the measurement, or, or the way that we do, I guess, is we say the, the average should be 100. 100 is just your normal average human being. And so whatever scores they get, we have to weight them accordingly to w weight weight them accordingly so that the middle is 100, so that most people get 100. And then I'm just going to draw a graph here. And so obviously some people score very, very low. Lots of people score 100. Lots of people score near 100. And then on the other side, well, it's supposed to be more even, a bell curve. I'm not the best bell curve drawer. Good enough. And so, okay, the the average, the middle, is 100, and then a standard deviation is supposed to be 15%. Right? Maybe this is um, too too mathematical for some people, but standard deviation equals 15%, which means just means that the average away from the average is 15%, or or that the majority of people score within 15 points, so they either get 85 or 115, okay, 15 point score. And then the uh, another important distinction here is, okay, so you say half the population falls between these two lines, so that those people are all pretty much normal, that's the vast majority of us. I'll draw that a little better. And then we make another distinction further up and further down at the lines of, oh, I'm not able to draw well, at 70. So the middle's 100, that's 70. 
and this is 130. So if you're more than two standard deviations, I don't know if that's actually the right term. I shouldn't get too statistical because I'm not very good at that. But the point is if you score below 70 or above a 130, that's when you sort of pass the threshold of being normal in this middle section. I don't want to label people as ad abnormal, but that is part of what the IQ test does. IQ test is is if you're down here, you are I don't know the politically correct term, but um, um mentally deficient maybe, mentally challenged. I think that's the right word. Forgive me if I'm wrong. I don't want to be insulting here. Mentally challenged. And then if you're on this side of it, above 130, they call that genius or gifted. Genius sort of has another uh, another more specific meaning. But um, if you if you score above 130, you are said to be a genius, more or less. And IQ does, you know, why are they sort of useful? Um, they they are supposed to be an indicator of well obviously intelligence but also of how good you'll do in school if you have an IQ of 135 you'll probably get straight A's but they they don't go hand in hand of course how hard you work in school determines that just as much if not more an interesting thing though an interesting thing is that besides uh, the language barrier besides um, poorer people generally score lower you know the people who have gone to school less don't do as well um, it is very genetic which I think is pretty interesting it's very uh, hereditary is what I should say Hered hereditary so if your mom or your dad or both have a very high IQ chances are good that you will have a very high IQ even if even if you were separated at birth from them and put in a completely different home different circumstances um, it it is pretty much carried in your genes which I think is pretty weird because when I think of intelligence when I think of problem solving and being confident that you can solve problems and being able to read and all of these things that are generally associated with intelligence, uh, it, it doesn't seem like it's genetic. I, it, it makes me wonder what part of the genes actually is activated that makes this happen. But anyway, that's just a quick overview. I, I don't, uh, I, I didn't touch on everything, but this is just uh, a quick look at uh, how the scores work, and, and I don't need to get into how the math works here. You know that the average is 100, and so if you score 30 below or 30 above, you're the same distance from average. And um, and and you know that it's, it's a biological thing. It's not just about what you learn or what you know.